This is John Isles, and you're listening to The Bill Podcast. Thank you so much, John Isles. One legend introduces another as we continue our trip down memory lane with Barbara Thorne. And speaking of John Isles, Barbara kicks off part two of her memories with an adventure with John. We did get invited to go to New Zealand to help them with their telethon. He didn't tell you about no, that, did he? No, no, no. Oh, did tell. <laughs> well, we went out to New Zealand to help them. They, you know, raise money with their telethon like we used to do here. And we went out. Ernie Wise was part of it. Some of the Coronation Street people were part of it. Some of Home and Away people were part of it. They said to us, we'd like you to prepare something when you're out there, because we were all stationed in different places. So John and I, we all went to Auckland, and then John and I went to Wellington. And they took us off in helicopters to see all these New Zealanders who'd been putting things together, like Scottish country dancing and Maori dancing. We did all of that. We had a blast. Anyway, they asked us to prepare something. And I said, I don't know what we can do, John. What can we do? I said, why don't we sing something like, maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. So John said, yeah, okay. Well, we practiced and rehearsed that and rehearsed it. And they said, okay, we're going over to Auckland. And on the screen, and John and I are in Wellington watching it, this great big frigate comes on with all these singers and dancers, and they're all singing. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. No way. John and I looked at each other and went, <laughs> oh no, what do we do now? So I said, come on, come on. So what, what else do we know? What else do we know? So I don't know. We came up with some other London type of song thinking that they do. I said, don't worry, John, we'll start, I'll start singing it, you can join in, and we'll get them all to join in. Well, we tried that, and they all looked at us with their mouths open, going, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was one of the most embarrassing times yeah. we've ever had. But we had, yeah, we had a, a blast. Oh. It's only four episodes in, you've got this brilliant storyline scenario where... A homeless woman has locked herself in a bathroom at John Bowe's home and then actually <laughs> kills herself in front of her kids and you're having to try and <laughs> resuscitate her and, and this is like this is like your fourth episode, you know, it's all about deep end, you know. <laughs> what did you learn about being a, a police woman? I mean, you know, because yeah. you've you've obviously experienced what these people experience every day in the real life, you know. Yeah. Before I actually came on screen they sent me off to Notting Hill Police Station mm. to go out with the police from Notting Hill. We went down All Saints Road and we did it at weekends. Oh, it was thrilling. It's mm. so thrilling to be in a police car with that going yeah. on. Anyway, so off we go and I'm listening to what the police are saying and what's going on. Suddenly, over the radio said... There's been an incident at such and such a pub. A man's been hit in the head with a hammer. Assailant has left the scene. We're there. We are there. So the two policemen in the front turned around to me and said, stay there, don't move, look after him. That's the one with the hammer in his head. Right. I'm going, oh no, I can't even look. (laughs) Hope he's not bleeding. Anyway, so the two police officers go off. Then a whole load of more police come in their cars, screech up. I'm sitting in the back of the car and they say, who are you? (laughs) Thinking I was probably the one that put the (laughs) hammer in his head. And I said, oh, hello, I'm an actress. (laughs) (laughs) And I, you know, and I said, I'm going to be in this programme. And so that's what I'm doing here. So that was my first kind of introduction. And the more things unfolded and the more, you know, to be that close to real stuff that happens, you cannot not respect Mm. what they do, the the situations that they have to put themselves in. I've always found that side hugely interesting. I love the fact. We're we're very 
privileged as actors mm. to be given the opportunities to work with the real people and that they love doing it so it's a, a two-way thing and on the bill we had one particularly very good police advisor called Jackie Morton and um, so if I had any questions I would phone Jackie up or speak to Jackie and say in this situation what would you do or how would you approach that mm. and as soon as you got kind of got their police psyche part mm. of them to, and you go all oh, right okay thank you I've got that now I know how I need to approach it yeah because no matter how many police things you've seen on the telly it's their job and when you're portraying it it has to come across as you've been doing it for the last 15 years yeah yeah and you know they're, they're very cool about it it's very in their real life it's very understated um, and I found that hugely useful. And at this time in the programme, there's no... Well, there's hints of private lives, but you never follow the characters home yeah. or see behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hinted... Uh, Chris Ellison yes. rejoins the cast as yes. Barrett. And it's hinted that there's been a, a romance before. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's you two have a wonderful chemistry, may <laughs> I say. It, it, is a, it is a real warmth that stays throughout yeah. your two years with Chris. What, yeah. what was he like to work with? Lovely. I mean, Chris has had done much more telly and film than I had done at that point. And he's just very solid. And you just feel, yeah, this is OK. Mm. And that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. We we just did it. You know, we just got on with it. It worked. It, it worked. And I, in a way, it was lovely that it was so understated. Mm. It wasn't a big thing. It's just put in people's minds for them to make of it what they wanted. Yeah, I think. yeah. And they, they did it again, which is one of my favourite viewer episodes. It's called Getting Stressed by Christopher Russell. And how about this? For In the opening 90 seconds, you find a crashed car. <laughs> you then have to help this man out of the car. And you're brilliant in this because you're saying, for God's sake, hurry up! You know, you're acting like a normal person would. <laughs> saying, look, if you don't get out of this car, it's going to explode. It then explodes, and you get your Nicolas Cage sort of moment, lovely close-up, his car is exploding, and he's kicked you in the stomach as well and run off because he's, <laughs> he's stolen the thing, you know, and you realise you're a policeman. That's all in the first 90 uh, seconds, you know. I, know. I mean, that's an awesome, having, having cars exploding around you. I know. Well, I mean, the crew, the camera crew, all the crew were always there, and they were all rock solid. They always were alert to what was going on. And we'd have rehearsals of stuff, so everyone felt comfortable and safe. It was, I mean, the first time, I, I'd watched some of the others who'd been on it longer than I had, thinking, oh, God, that looks amazing, that's great. And then never really thinking that I might have to do some <laughs> yeah. of it myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I did, mm. you know. Yeah, very, very well, may I say. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, that episode, you've just had this ordeal in, in, in the opening scene. And then Fraser gets back to the station and you have to deal with a rape case. And someone's come in and explained that she's been raped. So you've got to deal with that. And then the next scene, it's come out that you and Ted Roach have had an affair. And it's all <laughs> kicking off. And Tony Scannell's coming in. So what the hell have you been telling people for? And, and there's, all, there's all this stuff <laughs> kicking off. And then... Jeff I had a very busy life, yeah, didn't I? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then Jeff Stewart's coming in to, to talk about union business, and you're oh. like, not now, Hollis, you know, come <laughs> on. And uh, you've got a great line in that episode. Um, Graham Cole's holding a baby, and Trudy Goodwin's arrested a mum. She says, uh, drunk whilst in charge of a baby, mum, to which you respond to, well, you shouldn't drink whilst on duty, should you, Stamp? You know, you've still got time for humour, <laughs> yes. despite all this chaos going on around you. Just a favourite of one of my episodes. Yeah. You know? What was Tony Scannell like to work with? Tony... Tony was just, I think, always Tony in many ways. <laughs> right. But, you know, that's quite good because I think that, again, is the beauty of the small group of us, is that we all brought so much of who we were to it mm. that then makes it a lot, lot, lot easier because no one's trying to act up or anything. They're yeah. just... They're just doing it. And it's it's more throwaway, and I think that's why people love it. Mm. Because we're all told, I think, that you know people who are at the front line, like the police or people 
you know, in hospitals on the front line, they develop this weird sense of humour because you can't take it too seriously. And because it's kind of throwaway, that's what makes it more real. Because mm. if we all made big deal out of it, it would look amateur. Yeah, I think John and Tony, when they uh, started the series, had been told to play it Cockney, and they both said, no, we're, oh, not, we're right. not going to do that. Yeah. You know, we're going to yes. play it as us, you know, because yeah. it would be a lot more legit. Yeah. Now, this is, I'm going to geek out a bit here, but this is a unique moment. Okay. You, Barbara Thorne, <laughs> are the only regular of the bill in the 1980s to have a story where you are the only member of a regular cast in it. Mm. And a wonderful episode, just a little run around. Yeah. And that's that's unique. It was. It was it was just such the most wonderful gift to have been given. In fact, the guy who wrote it, Richard Harrison, I knew, but I didn't know that he was writing it for me. And when I saw it, I just thought, oh god, this is this is so exciting. This is amazing. So what they did was that they sent me actually somewhere around here where there is a police, not a police academy, but a, where the police train on stuff. And I went with the police and they taught me. They taught me what to do. They taught me how to carry the shield, what I had to do with the shield and what I had to do with the helmet and how I had to hold my head if anything was thrown at me. And they did, they threw, I mean, not... Initially, I had two policemen on either side, yeah. and it was happening to them. But they were throwing petrol bombs at you, mm. and how you deal with that. And I, of course, I felt totally, totally secure. I had like six foot six policemen on either yeah, side, yeah. <laughs> and they're saying, "No, this is what you do." This is, and we did all of that. I remember there was a some kind of thing going on outside of the building where we were filming, which was all part of the film, and how you walk around the side of a building yeah. when you don't know what's coming around the other corner. So I spent a lot of time with these guys doing all of that. I <laughs> loved it. It yeah. was great. And then we came to actually do it, and some of the guys who were training me about how to do it were all also invited to be part of the episode so that they were always around. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Mm. Pretty awesome. A wonderful moment where um, lovely actress called Aidy Allen, who's yes, still doing lots fabulous of work. She is. And she finds you, and you're having that, that emotional moment away from all the men, yeah. you know, and, and you're composing yourself. I love that moment because we've all been, I did it as a kid. I had a karate thing where I had to go and have my white belt, you know, and I bottled it. And I didn't do it. And I went on crying to my mum and said, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Fraser does do it. She mm. carries on. But that lovely minute, just wiping the tears away. Very, but in a very, you've still got the composure and the dignity, even <laughs> though you're upset. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful performance. You know, oh. Even now, it's, it's really you. stunning. No, that's it's my, my pleasure. And it's directed, but I think I'm pronouncing it, like Eva Kolotova. Yes. And, and I think she went into documentary filmmaking. I mean, she... It's interesting because even with all the mayhem and everyone running it on match, she still she still makes time to give you a close up any mm -hmm. uh, every moment. You know, even when you're That's running. That's right. I've over. forgotten because I she came from documentary, right? And then she took this on, and so that was an interesting mix, mm. and probably what added to the whole episode really mm. her take on it as a documentary. Yeah, yeah. Because it's lovely the way the I mean, obviously the cameras always moving in those early seasons of the bill anyway but mm. there's a lovely mix of, of of the wide camera angle as well mm. which is more like do documentary feel because yes. you've got that space and that yes. location as well yeah. so is that a nice bit of pride that you had that episode I mean, it's the only episode in the in, in the entire 1980s where there's no no other regulars in it. no. it's just you I mean, oh, it was a bit lonely <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh it, no, no it was it was lovely and it was a, a real gift as I say mm. to be given that mm. but I think I was exhausted <laughs> at the yeah. end yeah, but... because the I mean the the shields that they carry are really really heavy mm. and it's just being having that strength all the time and the mind set of moving on to the next thing of what needs what she would be doing in these situations mm. and I think being yeah, I was put in these overalls that 
they wear, which are fireproof overalls and fireproof gloves and great big cobnail boots <laughs> and this this great shield and this helmet. And of course, the, the helmet has got a glass thing. Yeah. But what you have to do is, is if you're going towards danger, is that you drop your head so that the bottom part of the perspex of the helmet lands on your chest so that no flames go up. Wow. Up. A bit of a training stayed with you, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it has. Yeah. It yeah. has stayed. And, you know, apart from it being a great episode to be given as an actor, but anything like that, it, it's just, it changes you as a person mm. because you kind of go, I've done that. Mm. And, oh, yeah, I did have two big policemen either side of me but I did it I did it and that is extraordinary and so it gives me an understanding of what these guys go through Mm. which is a lot worse Mm. another crack in it it really did give you because arguably not all the cast were so consistently looked after with great storylines how often were you advised on what was going to happen to Fraser or was it just a surprise it was a surprise wow but Prior to the bill, there was Juliet Bravo. Yes. And Juliet Bravo was not in, you know, in London. Mm. It was like country policing. (laughs) And so my character, when she came in, I think would have been the first female senior officer in a series that was dealing with inner city stuff. Yeah. And I, I guess then that must have kind of tickled all the the writers thinking oh what can we write for her yeah, then yeah because then you get into speaking freely which is a fantastic episode you and ben roberts have gone it's, it's the episode of fraser's appraisal yeah and, and, and he as burnside points out is feeling threatened by you and so he's written you're pretty damning appraisal you know <laughs> and you have it's a fantastic series of scenes of peter ellis when you're explaining we well, used to do you have any idea what it's like to be a woman inspector I've been mauled, I've been abused, and, uh, and not just by the public, but by policemen, you know. Mm. And then you, you have that lovely scene where you're, you're uh, before you go in, you, you're putting your lipstick on, and then you refer to that in the scene where you, I'm having to pretend that I'm not interested in kids or sewing and all this, and I have to look in the mirror to remind myself of my femininity, you know. I mean, it's gold dust it it's was. writing, isn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, you played it so, so well. At the time, it was... And it still is, isn't it? We're mm. still talking about equality now. So it was so much part of the time. Mm. And that's why, I mean, it did resonate with me. Mm. And I'm sure it resonated, hopefully, with everyone who was watching it, who mm. might have identified with that. Yeah. You're talking about it from the police point of view, but as an actor, was it as prevalent then? And has it got any better a quality, Or is it still the same battles? Yes, it is you... still the same battles, really. Yeah. Mm. 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 it's interesting you taught Jodie Whittaker yes. and now she, I mean, she's the new doctor I'm so excited I mean I've been a, a Hoovian for over 20 years I cannot wait to see her in acting yeah. and how brilliant for the storyline perspective they can give it so much new stuff but yeah. it's also quite sad to see the amount of nonsense that has has been mm. written about it the reaction about oh, it as, as opposed to how can you judge someone on a performance you mm. haven't seen yet mm. and it's interesting that yeah. things haven't really change no. you know but they're going in the right direction they hopefully. Are. yeah they are. yeah and, yeah it would take some time even yeah. more you know cranking it all up yeah. again yeah you could be the next doctor <laughs> be you next <laughs> here we go yeah i'll tune in i bet we all would listening to this you know that's fantastic storylines that's towards the end of series five was it your decision to move on from the bill the executive producer was Peter Crugine, who mm. was lovely, and he's someone I'm still very much in touch with. And every year, I think we all had an opportunity to go and speak to Peter about how do you, he would say, how do you think things are going, and, you know, are you happy with this and you happy with that? And I went in and had my meeting with Peter, and he said, how, how are things going? And I said, fine. And he said, I just want you to know that Michael Chapman, now Michael Chapman used to be an executive producer and was coming back, and Michael Chapman had decided that he didn't really think the bill had a place for women. Oh. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? Yeah, I know. And so I said to Peter Cregine, I said, well, oh, okay, 
Right. Um, so I knew immediately what that was going to be meaning. So I said, look, I'm not asking you actually for any more money, but what I'm going to ask you for is that if that is the case, I would really like to have some nice episodes to write me out. Yeah. And Peter did that for me. Isn't that brilliant? That's yeah. good. Quite telling of the, the, the reason she's going off, which I, I, I have the title of your thesis here. <laughs> uh, is It's... A comparative study of women's career patterns in the police force and private industry and commerce. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like then it was going on behind the scenes. As, as, it's ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that you get all this great... Because she's a fantastic character and it's all for all the right reasons. And then that, that must have been a, a disappointment for you. Because would, would you have quite happily stayed yes. longer term? Yes, yeah. Because we were all enjoying it, but in in a way, when you've got long running series, people it's not just the actors who come and go, but the producers come and go, and they have their own ideas of where they want to take it next. Mm. You know, the fact that I got some nice episodes to go out on, yeah, that was okay, but that was fortunate for me because little did I know, Linda Laplante had been watching The Bill. Uh-huh. And Linda Laplante was very curious about why they weren't using the women in it more. Because in her mind, there's loads that could be done with it. Mm. Linda Laplante was also connected with Jackie Moulton, who was our police advisor. advisor. And Jackie got a hold of me and she said, Linda would love to meet you. So I said, great, Mm. thank you. So I went and met Linda and we just talked about the bill and Linda said to me, in my mind there's so much that they could have been doing with the women in that programme, but they haven't. And she was asking me questions. She said, how did you feel about this? How did you, did you think about how your hair should be? I mean, things I didn't think Linda would be asking me about. Yeah. What Linda had been doing was writing Prime Suspect. Wow. And she said, I'm sorry that I can't get you in Prime Suspect because it's too close. You've just done the bill. So then Prime Suspect happened. My friendship with Linda grew and developed. And I then did seven series of her trial and retribution. retribution. Oh, how magic. So in a way, it was just a brilliant kind of transition for me. I mean, it didn't happen immediately, but it... It was great. Yeah, and what a what a wonderful thing that time elapsed and kind of honoured yeah. your your support of her and your help. Yeah, I, mean, I love stories like that. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's what this is all about. It's yes. gold dust, isn't it? Yes, That's it fantastic. Is. And so, did you have a leaving party? I mean, in the, in the, in the show, Fraser is invited to Taffy's leaving party. <laughs> yes. so you you get mistaken as as a double booking of the stripper yeah. who just walked out in, in disgust, which is a nice laugh. Yeah, you, know, you get you get to end on a yeah. laugh. But what was it like for you to to leave? And I did have a leaving party actually after we'd filmed that last scene. It was a great party, and everybody was there. And yes, there is an obviously an element of sadness but because we are all friends and we still are yeah. it's like well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> au revoir yeah. we're gonna see each other anyway it, it didn't really matter but yeah we did have a nice party <laughs> in in the script in your leaving speech you were saying that you were looking forward to spending time in an academic environment with people who could offer some intellectual stimulation so that was what fraser was looking for what were you looking forward to as new challenges after the bill? And where, where was your mindset once the series had finished? And how was your profile? It seems to me when you've been in a series for a long period of time, inevitably people identify you with that series. And I have to say, you know, the bill was just brilliant for me. It sort of, yes, all those years ago I asked Brian Parker, please, could you see me? I've never done a television before. Then I was part of a series working with fantastic directors who would talk to you at the end of filming if you wanted to. You could watch the rushes and they would point out, that's really good what you did there. So I was learning, learning, learning all the time. And so, yes, I was known as Inspector Fraser. So I then had 
I've done a lot of long running series. Yeah. <laughs> so I then experience what happens, which is sometimes you have a huge gap with no work at all mm. because you're too identifiable with something else. So at, at that point, all I really wanted to do, I knew I wanted to stay in film and television, but I had no idea of what might be coming up. And I mean, there were little bits of things for the BBC and I think I did something for ITV little bits of pieces come up but in fact that is what then made me go into being an executive coach because yeah. I wasn't going to hang around for 10 years yeah. waiting for something to happen and you, you bookended the 90 you know you have phrase at the start and then you're playing a detective inspector in the other iconic london series of eastenders oh, and God. a very well, memorable storyline well i went up my agent said there's a part we're going to send you up for a big storyline that they're doing at the moment would you go up and meet them for it and i said yeah lovely and i walked in and the director was lovely director called philip casson who had also been one of the directors on the ah, bill. Andy. <laughs> anyway, we just chatted, and he said, it's yours, <laughs> the part's yours. <laughs> so before I'd even left the building, my agent had said, it, yeah. It's you, a done deal. You, it's a done deal. Yeah. And that was interesting, because it was a murder investigation, and I, Jackie Moulton put me in touch with a female murder investigation officer, and I said, how would you play this? Because it was the character of Steve, which was Martin Kemp, and then... And uh, Joe Absalom. Who played... Uh, Matthew, Matthew. Matthew Rose. Matthew, yeah. And I said, when you're interviewing, how would you do it? So she said, well, this is what I would do. When I'm interviewing Steve, she said, I'd be very casual about it. Very you know, matter of fact. However, when I question Matthew I'd really be tough on him and that's exactly what I did and I could see how that worked with them because yeah. they weren't sure what I was doing either oh, no. because she told me that's that's what they would do that was a a great piece of work I I love being on EastEnders again they're a great crowd of people mm. but I what I wasn't prepared for I had been prepared for being recognized from the bill but being in EastEnders, man, that was something else. That I did get a bit scared then, right? Because I was people. I'd get on the tube, and you know, suddenly everyone, and everyone I, was watching. And EastEnders. It, was, it was a massive. I mean, I remember watching that. Yeah, remember that episode, that whole storyline. I mean, that everyone watched it. As yeah. you say, you know, that was the tagline. Everyone was talking about yeah. it. And so yeah, DIY. I got the duff duff. Did you? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, wonderful. Quite right. Oh, that's magic. <laughs> Well, we should get you back to do another investigation. <laughs> Are you listening, EastEnders? Yeah. And then, of course, you have a, a, another another gift and another iconic crime series with Judge John Deed. So how, yeah. how did this come along? Prior to that, I had the BBC had spoken to me about becoming one of the regular characters on Holby City. I think it was Holby, not Casualty. And it was between me and another actress, and the other actress got it. So, you know, that happens. Mm. And I, of course, I was disappointed. Then I think it was probably about a month or two months later, my agent got a call and they said, we are, we're launching a series called Judge John Deed. It's Martin Shaw, and we would like to see Barbara for it. And um, I went up, and again... <laughs> It was like, yeah, it's yours. Oh, magic, magic. And that, it was, again, that was a brilliant time. Mm. Seven years we did that. Yeah, and, and you're only one of three who were in every episode. You, Jenny Seagrove and Martin Shaw, are the only three who were in every episode. Are we? Yeah, there Gosh. you go. You're part of the Holy Trinity, right? Yeah. yeah. And she's good fun, Coop, isn't she? She's his oh. sanity check, isn't she? You know, Any time he's getting up to complete mischief. Yes. Man, yes. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, Judge? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, was it, yeah. uh, it was such fun because, I mean, Martin had, I mean, so much stuff to <laughs> learn and get through. Jenny and Caroline Langrish, you know, who are playing mm. the barristers, they had all of that stuff. And, of course, there's me 
you know, with the judge either on the bench or in his chambers. And in fact, Gordon Newman, G.F. Newman, who wrote it, he wasn't too sure of how he was going to write Coop. So again, before we filmed it, I went up to the Royal Courts of Justice and followed two judges' clerks for a week wow. and met a whole load of judges as well. So in a way, Gordon had put me in, but he hadn't quite, didn't quite know how she was going to sit with it all. So I kind of, again, brought what I wanted to bring to Coop, mm. that she was tough, she was stern, she was rude sometimes, she liked to have a lot of fun sometimes. And I just used to kind of slip it in. And in the end, they said, yeah, that's great. You can just do that, do what you want. Well, that's what I love about your characters, and it's entirely down to you, is that I feel your characters... They live off the screen when when, yeah. they're, when they're not in the scene. It's like, yes. Oh, well, I better know what Coop's doing right now. Yeah. Isn't it? You, you make them real. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're a very clever lady. <laughs> it's a pleasure watching you work. Really well, I, I I enjoy it, and mm. I think that's the whole thing. You know, when I listen to your other podcasts with the other cast members, and we've all been saying the same thing, we were just having a blast. We en- really were enjoying our work, mm. and. That's it, I think, and we're very lucky. And uh, shows you'd like to add to your resume what, what that are out there now, you know, what 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 would you like to be next on the on your IMDb? What what what's the next gig? Do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, my, my my career has followed a bit of a theme, which is all about you know law, <laughs> yeah, in some way or other, isn't it? Yeah. So I I wouldn't mind kind of having a a crack at something else in that arena or something completely different. But the thing that I... There were some other shows that I did with wonderful John Howard Davis, Mm. who was the original Oliver Twist. Right. And John wrote some and produced and directed a whole load of iconic comedy things Mm. like... The Good Life, Ever Decreasing Circles, Monty Python, you Forty know, Towers, I think it yeah, right. Forty yeah. Towers, and so I was up at the theatre in Nottingham doing some plays. The whole of the cast and some of the stage management all came up to Nottingham to see oh. me, which was lovely. We had a big party after that. <laughs> ben Roberts put that on because oh, he lived out that way, and one of the stage management had gone back and she was working on a show with John Howard Davis and she said you must see Barbara Thorne you know we've just been up seeing her in this show you must see her and of course he was down in London and he wouldn't be necessarily coming up to Nottingham Mm. to see a show and he said okay get her in get her in so I went and met him for a comedy series called I Hope It Rains that's what it was called and it, Tom Bell, do you remember Tom Bell? Oh. Tom Bell was a big bad boy. <laughs> and <laughs> he was in films, he was just a brilliant actor. And I read the script with John Howard Davis, and he said, that's it, you've got it. So I said, thank you. And so I did that, and then John put me in some of his other stuff as well. You did Law and Disorder. Law and Disorder. Which John was, Isles is in yeah. as well, yeah. And I did a third one with John Howard Davis. But one of the biggest compliments was from him to me because he said to me, you have perfect comedy timing. Wow. <laughs> so thank you very much. So I would love to venture now to have the opportunity to do some comedy. Yeah. I really, really would. That would be the icing on the cake yeah. right now. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Yes. I, I, I'd love to see that. <laughs> you, uh, you've got a great laugh out of me. Uh, it is another crime one in The Last Detective having had an affair with Roy Hudd, yeah. and you take a long smoke on your cigarette yeah. and say, I don't like to share, <laughs> Inspector. <laughs> a lovely scene with Peter Davison, yeah. Being on the wrong side of the law for once, yes. being interrogated by a cop. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, the bill, it still follows you around. Yeah. You know, Fraser lives on in, in that regard. So, I mean, what, what's your message to the fans of the bill who will be so thrilled that you're doing this. I've already have guesses as to who my inspector is going to be in this interview. Uh, what do you take away from the bill and uh, what's your message to the fans who will be listening to this? 
Well, for everyone who has, and myself, you know, when I watch things that I really love, it's just heaven because you kind of get drawn into it and you have the characters who you really like and the like you and the mm. moments that you really like. And I really hope that television continues and, and we have had some fabulous stuff this year you know there is some really good writing and some really good stuff mm. that's happening my concern sometimes i suppose is the summer and there's not an awful lot on the telly to watch mm. but my concern is is that we are doing less drama mm. a lot more reality reality and, stuff yeah, love island and all that and you know drama does just take you to a different place and it's very it can be hugely educational and and it can touch people's own life experience. Yeah, I suppose that's my my wish. And I suspect all of us are just hugely grateful for doing the job that we do and hugely grateful that people like it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's why the, the, the bill's going to be repeated on drama soon. You know, Fraser's going to be back in the hot seat. You well, know. that's going to be a bit of a shock. <laughs> um, I, I will look about 12. I think yeah. I look about 12 then. <laughs> You, you've hardly changed a bit, really. really, really. Now, I, I ask everyone to nominate a charity, but listeners who are enjoying this for free can, can support. So yes. what, what's a charity close to your heart? It's a respite care for young children. It's the Demelza Hospice Care oh, for right. children in Sussex, in Kent and in London. Children who are very poorly, mm. they have had treatment and they can stay in these wonderful surroundings in the countryside. Their parents can go, their siblings can go. It's just respite. It's like, forget all the horrible stuff that's been happening, so they can have fun. Oh, well, that sounds lovely. I'll, <laughs> I'll pop a link on at the end okay. of, of the podcast. Barbara Fawn, thank you so much for doing this. I've loved talking to well, you. Well, I've really enjoyed it because I've relived my past. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to your future. Yeah. I can't wait to see you back on our screen. Thank I'm you. Very soon. So, thank, thank you, you, Ollie. I've enjoyed it. Oh, bless you. <laughs> thank you. My huge thanks to Barbara for being such wonderful company. Every now and then you meet people and you just wish you'd known them for a lot longer. She's a, a lovely person, tremendous giggler. Uh, this one was supposed to be 30 minutes, but it turned into 40. I'm sure you don't mind having a bit extra Barbara Fawn in your lives. I certainly don't. Our thanks also to the legendary John Isles, who kindly put Barbara and I in touch. You can thank him personally, because John's now on Twitter, so give him a follow, at John Isles VO. Barbara's nominated charity is the Demelza Hospice Care for Children, they aim to make life better for babies, children and young people who have life-threatening or life-limiting conditions. You can read more and make a donation at demelza.org.uk. Enjoying seeing Barbara and the Sunhill Gang back in action on the Drama Channel. The repeats hadn't been announced when I recorded the next podcast you're about to hear, with a legend for whom memories of a bill are never that far away. Next time on the Bill Podcast. It's very strange, actually, because I live, I moved to Shepherd's Bush when I got the bill, because we used to film it up in Barbie Road, which is, you know, just up Labrick Road, and I've lived here ever since, in different places. So I still, I mean, pretty much every day, I'll drive past a chemist, and I'll go, 
I arrested a junkie in there. You know, it's like, it's stuff like that. It's, it's all the history of it is all around this part of London for me. It's very weird, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs>